You're listening to today's inspirational message on the Proverbs with Kurt Bjorklund. Proverbs 13 verse 22 says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. You may hear that and say, well, there's biblical rationale to have a lot of money for the next generation. And that certainly could be uh, what that's all about. But I think in this context that pride says, I want to leave my kids money more than it wants to impact kids' character. Here's verse 24. Whoever spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. So let's just take a moment and consider this. Proverbs 10.1 says that a wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is a sorrow to his mother. When children are on a good path, leading productive lives, it brings joy to their parents. While children on a self-destructive path bring pain. Well, God's grace is evident in the pathways that children choose. It often transcends one's parenting. Yet, according to Proverbs, there is a correlation between discipline and the pathway that's chosen. And Proverbs 13, 24 gives us four things that would make it possible to discipline your children. And when your children are disciplined, that would leave them worthy of somebody you'd want to leave money to. The first uh, component to disciplining a child is love. It says this right here where it says he who loves his son um, is willing to discipline him or diligent to discipline him. And love is is obvious to a child. It's easier for a parent to impart important lessons and standards when a child knows that they are loved and they have that sense of assurance. The second thing here is constancy. And this is in this word diligence. To be diligent implies that a parent works tirelessly at the task before him or her and doesn't change standards or expectations based on the mood of the parent. Discipline that is er erratic will be ineffective. And then there's correction, and this is the word discipline. Discipline is the intention is to correct, train, and cultivate godly character by driving out folly and wrong behavior. That's how the Zondervan Study Bible defines that phrase discipline. Discipline addresses both foolish thinking and behavior, and it compels a child toward godly character and wise thinking and behavior. Discipline in Proverbs is often physical, chapter 17, 10, chapter 19, 18, but it includes the concept certainly of logical consequences. But here's where the pride motif comes in, and that is there's also self-awareness. Notice this this idea of spares and hates. Whoever spares the rod hates his son. Self-love shows itself through lax standards and an unwillingness to challenge a child's will or ways. And what that is, is it's pride that says, I want to be loved more than I want to execute discipline. Parents can often have a comfort or personal reputation as their motivations for the way they handle their children. And when I say a comfort, what I mean is their own comfort or their reputation. So it's all about how it's perceived or how it feels. But choosing to challenge a child because of your own comfort is a way or a mode of hating that child. This is what it is to spare the rod and hate the child. And so don't let pride be that underlying issue that keeps you from what you really want, which is a child. If you're a parent who grows to love God, serve God and be on a good path. And so today determine that you won't spare the rod with your child, but you will love them enough to correct them and to do all you can to cultivate godly character within them. Thanks for joining us here today. There's a lot of great content to explore on Orchard Hill Plus and on the Orchard Hill main feed from the weekend. Have a great day.